Nurse TV, brought to you by Hester. We were asleep and the phone rang, uh, realising you know, it was far too early in the morning to have a phone ring, you know, that terror that strikes at your heart. My husband answered the phone, because we have one beside the bed, and, and he just said, yes, yes, is it really bad? I remember him saying that. He said, we'll be there as soon as we can. And I remember, you know, your heart just sinks to the floor, because obviously I knew that Tanith was at the party. And um, so, you know, I just said, what's wrong, what's wrong, it's Tanith, isn't it? And he said, yes. So hold yourself together. She's been in a very bad car accident. Things are very bad. She's at the trauma unit at the Alfred and we've got to get there straight away. The whole way in, you're sort of not expecting what you, what you see. You're sort of, you're hoping for the best, um, but you just sort of, you just don't know. At this, that stage, you're sort of numb the whole way in. You sort of, you just can't think, you're not thinking straight. You just, you know, it's just no feeling whatsoever. We had to wait a long time almost an hour to see her and in the end I just lost it and demanded to see her because they kept saying oh you know we've just got to clean her up we've just got to do this and in the end I thought no that's my baby I want to see her now um, yeah and then going into that room um, it was just terrible it was so much stainless steel so cold so big machinery everywhere um, and she's just laying out like this, as if she was asleep. Yeah, you know, she looked dead, actually. I thought she was dead. No, it was a single vehicle accident. Um, we don't know all of the details yet, um, but apparently we understand that they were collected from the um, function to go to a, another, to a nightclub um, by one of the girls though with her boyfriend, picked them up and was going to drive them there. Now, we understand that he was over the limit, that he was speeding, he lost control of the car, um, and went to a sideways skid into a stainless steel tram pole and Tanith took the total impact of the car, of the, the hit. She broke her neck first time by hitting the pole. She went sideways and broke her neck and ripped all of the uh, nerves out of the spinal cord. The car then stopped and then surged forward and she broke her neck the second time going forward. Um, the car, we understand, then separated from the rear to the front and she was taken with that part of the car and thrown 15 metres outside the car. During that time, the car, we understand, went six times rolled, six times head front to back this way, just disintegrating as it went. Uh, there were six people in the car and three of them were thrown from the car. But obviously, Tanith's injuries were the most severe. At this point, I was more concerned about brain damage and I was actually, at this point actually praying that she would die um, because to have gone through that and to land 15 metres outside the car, the trauma to her brain before she even left the car, uh, I thought, she's a vegetable. If she survives, she's a vegetable and I would rather her go in peace than to have to live as a vegetable. Um, so I was actually praying for her to die. Um, I actually spoke to her and gave her permission to die if she wanted to go. It was okay with us. Uh, but if she wanted to stay, it was okay with us too. But um, 
I just thought it would be harder for her to live if she was terribly brain damaged. On the Monday morning, I sat down with the doctors and the doctors actually said to me, there is a chance that she's not going to come out of coma. She's not going to... If she does, she probably will have severe brain damage. And they actually did give me an option to, or to start thinking about the option of turning off the machines on the Wednesday, which was two days later. And to, just to start thinking about that on, on the Monday morning. So from then to where we are now, for me, it's just a bonus. Like, once she woke up, because she opened her eyes for the first time that Monday night, um, it was just the happiest time of my life when I saw her open her eyes. He told me that I'd been in an accident, that um, it was on the way, or on the way from what they think was from the the pub to the city, that it was on King's Way, and that I was quadriplegic, and that uh, at that point there was no movement in my legs. And I remember saying to Jay, "What about my arms?" And he said that they they didn't know; they'd have to wait and see with that. The nurses were just, oh, they were unbelievable. I don't know how they do it in ICU. I wouldn't be able to do something like that because they were just so they were so strong for you and just now were explaining everything that the doctors didn't explain they explained it as well so it was yeah they were a great big they were a really big help when when I was on the ward I was just just really desperate to get here knowing it was the last step before I was able to go home but when it came time to leave the Austin because I'd you know formed quite strong attachments with the nursing staff and, and trusted their ability and, and trusted the way they knew how to deal with me it was quite frightening to come over to rehab and start it all again. Like, you know, please don't move me this way, please hold me that way. It was really frightening. And the day I got here, it was really daunting, actually. I was, I was a bit teary, but didn't take long to fit in. The staff, from the very beginning, the staff were fabulous here. Just great. Her primary nurse is Helen and she's just been terrific the whole way through. Any problems you have, we just go to her, we have a chat and she get, she can help us straight away or she goes away and tells, finds out something for us and then gets back to us straight away. She's just been terrific the whole way through. I'd say there are three components to our role really. One is the day-to-day -day care. Another component is that we do what we call educate our patients and we teach them what it means to have a spinal cord injury, what are the implications and complications, how it might affect their lives and how to overcome obstacles or learn to live with them if they can't be overcome. And the third component is that we help plan their discharge. Basically at, the, at this point in time, I'm completely dependent upon my carers. So getting dressed, getting undressed, being moved from the bed to the wheelchair, to the shower commode, I'm dependent completely upon other people. So the showering process is, has to be done by the staff, toileting process by the staff. I mean uh, the bowels, I don't mean um, urine because I've got a, a catheter for that, but they have to do all of that. Um, and if you don't have a, a I guess, a, a trust or some sort of connection with your carer, it's very uh, embarrassing because they're, they're quite personal things they're dealing with. And from the very beginning, Helen is so soft and gentle and, and her nature is so caring that she makes those procedures not embarrassing at all. Little 